truth is effusive. And everything good tends to diffuse itself, like the sun diffuses itself in light and heat and flowers and perfume. And if I had some knowledge of truth and goodness, I just wanted it to overflow. Mm -hmm. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You have had uh, friendships with uh, people who have, uh, you've met in prison. Yes. And uh, one of the pictures that you may see, yeah. see, is this Zucchetta out through prison bars. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the, uh, the prisoners came to the prison gate with me, and I had that in my pocket. And I intended to give it to the first, the man who was nearest me. Mm -hmm. And I gave it to this one, Nick. I remember him very well. And he said, this for me. And he began to cry and went back to his cell. Later on, they sent me this painting of his hands reaching out, holding that zucchetto. One of the questions is, how do you begin yeah. when you talk to prisoners? Yeah. They think you have the white hat. They have the black hats. <laughs> Everything depends on the first line. Mm. So this was my first line. I said, gentlemen, I want you to know there is one big difference between you and me. You got caught. <laughs> In other words, we're both sinners. But let's start there. As you look back, uh, we can say that you certainly have been a rebel within the church. You've had very strong feelings, uh, and you have not shied away from, from stating those feelings. Uh, if you had to do it over again, would you do it the same way? I would try to be better. In what way? Try to be holier. Don't you think you've been holy? Not holy enough, no. Really? No. What do you mean being That's holier? You, you, uh... Oh, I try to be more Christ-like in every single way. How do you feel <clears throat> about women not being able to become priests? Well, how do I feel about, first of all, that isn't a feeling. It has nothing to do with it. If the good Lord wanted uh, women to be priests, he would have made his own mother one. And it isn't a sex choice. And we won't get into that. It's something that's hidden that's hidden deeply in the scriptures, where a man is the symbol of Christ and the woman is the symbol of the church. As in the Old Testament, man was the symbol, the husband was the symbol of God, and Israel was his wife. So the old prophecy, prophet said, Israel, uh, thou art my spouse, God speaking. That's where the mystery is hidden, not in the question of feeling, civil rights. It has nothing to do with that. And uh, furthermore, I don't know how we'll be improved. We are not the best, but he doesn't choose the best. Women might be better. He didn't choose me because I was better than someone else. Even God's love is blind. We find that a good many people uh, don't go to church anymore. That's not to say that they cease to be Catholics or whatever, but they don't go to church. Can you still be a good Catholic and not go to church? Not a very good one, no. And you can't be a very club, good club, club member without paying dues and without going to the club. You can't say you're a good Yankee fan unless you go and watch the Yankees play. It's very distressful to me to find a so-called, quote, good churchgoer who is capable of prejudice. Yes, they do not keep all of the law. They just keep some of it. And uh, the excuse is used, well, I do not go to church because there are so many hypocrites. But there's always room for a few more. When we look over your you know, incredible past, there are people who have said that you should have risen to greater heights. Um, do you feel you should have? No. Why? I do not, I do not feel that way. First of all, you're talking only about honors. Mm -hmm. And honors are accidental. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be quite vain of me to think that I should be something else than I actually am. I am very happy to have done what I and accomplished what I have done. But uh, to be more than I am, no.
There is no one in the Catholic Church who has uh, amassed as large a list of, of notable converts as you've been credited with, from Claire Booth Luce to Fritz Chrysler to Louis Boudens, who was the managing editor of the Daily Worker. Among those, I mean, who do you, which one fills you with the greatest pride in terms of an achievement? Which one? I think the first one, which was a the lady who conducted the boarding house in Paris when I went there to study mm -hmm. as a young priest. <clears throat> I could barely speak French. So I had to talk to her with a dictionary. And uh, hence it was a great effort. But I received her into the church. And that proved, you see, that it was nothing in my power that did it. It was simply the grace of the good Lord that created the response in her. She perhaps was the most notable because there was no relationship between cause and effect. Are you saying there was no special magic that must be worked to, to no, make a convert? No, because I couldn't talk her language. Uh, what do you feel was the, the special ingredient that was able to work this kind of thing on people, make them converts? First, that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. After all, that's my duty. We were sent out to make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it. It's a good way to save your soul. St. James says, if you save a soul, you save your own. And at least I could do it indirectly. Of the people that you've known, people who have crossed your life, I mean, who, who, who remained especially important to you? Well, those who affected me. Mm. One would be a priest who did much to teach me to talk. I told you I was on the debating team. Well, the night before, one of the big debates, the Notre Dame debate. He called me over to his room and he said, Fulton, you are absolutely the worst speaker this world has ever seen. But before you leave this room, you're going to be a good one. Now stand up there in the corner and take a paragraph of your speech and go over it. I went over it. See your mistake? Try it again. To underline certain words, stand on your toes, shout when you see these words. See your mistake? No. Try it again. One hour. Two hours. See your mistake? Well, being naturally quick. <laughs> I said to him, yes. I'm not natural. He said, all right, that's all. Huh. And that, that's what did it? That is what did it. That was an unbelievable period when you were on television opposite Milton Berle, which was Milton yes. Berle's heyday. You became good friends, though, as yes. a result of that. Milton's picture is up here. He used one of my stories. When I was given an Emmy Award, I found that everybody else who had received an Emmy thanked this person, that person, and so on. So when I arose, I, I said, well, I wish to thank my writers, too. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> well, Milton has used that as his own. <laughs> I see a picture of Jackie Gleason. Yes, too. yes. Do you have an yes. affinity for comedians? Yes. Do you? Yes. Oh. As a matter of fact, on many anniversaries of my priesthood and my anniversaries as a bishop, I try to invite in humorous people. Hmm. I will have mass beforehand. That's serious and the renewal of life, then at dinner, I don't know, a humorous person is uh, closely related to being spiritual because he never takes anything at face value. Hmm. The rest of us, were, we f see a line and we follow it. They turn very quickly with a pun or a twist of thought. A humorist is one who sees through things. Serious people are those who can't see through things. They're too thick. And God made the world with a sense of humor. So that when we looked at the sunset, well, we were to see something of his beauty. The snow, something of his purity. The mountains, his power. We were to see through all of these things. And therefore, comedians are related very much to genuine piety. But to know the sense of humor is something that 
people seem to be born with. It, it seems that it's nothing you can cultivate, develop. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But uh, I had took me a long time to learn how to tell a story. Really? Yes. How did you finally learn? By listening to other people tell stories. And I would say to myself, why is that story dull? And generally because it was too long. They didn't come to the punchline quickly enough. 